Welcome to 1 Minute Utilities, where we look at utility functions that you can code up in 1 minute or less. Many of these you wouldn't even write as a separate function, but discussing them here provides you with a quick reference on how to achieve these tasks in code. In this lesson, we will look at JavaScript arrays, so let's go. The first utility function we will look at is if an item of an unknown type is actually an array. Traditionally, this used to involve looking at the prototype of the item to see if it is an array constructor, and some people even used improper hacks like checking if the item has a property like length. However, modern JavaScript provides a built-in API for this. There is a static method called isArray on the array object that provides this functionality, providing us with the first example of a utility function that you never need to write or import anymore. The next utility function we will look at is the isEqual function that determines if two arrays are equal. Now it really depends upon how you define array equality, but a common definition is if the length of the two arrays are equal and each item in the individual arrays is equal, then the arrays are considered to be equal. Here we are utilizing the triple equal operator among the array items, but you might need to tweak it if you are comparing two object arrays. Next, we will look at a few statistic utilities for an array of numbers. First up is a function that returns the maximum number in an array. Fortunately, there is a built-in static method called max on the math object that takes numbers as arguments. We can spread the array into arguments for the function using the spread operator. One thing to be aware of is that if the array is empty, the function will be invoked with zero arguments and the max function will return minus infinity. And we will look at how we can handle that special case in our next example. Now very similar to the max function is the min function. And we can simply use the min static method on the math object. Similar to max for an empty array, this function will return infinity and you can add special handling for infinity or minus infinity with an equals check. The next utility function we will look at is the sum function. There isn't a built-in method for this, but you can use array reduction to add the individual members into an accumulator and kick off the reduction with an accumulator value of zero. Very similar to sum is the average function. Average is simply the sum of the values divided by the number of items, which we can get from the array length. Now, if there are no items in the array, this will result in a divide by zero and JavaScript will return a special value called nan. If you want to check for this special case, you have to use a static method on the number object as triple equality does not work on nan. And that's the end of the statistic utilities. The next utility we will look at is a function to join two arrays, also called array concatenation. The reason we are looking at this utility is that beginners might be tempted to use the addition operator. Sadly, this is not supported and fortunately TypeScript will even give an error in this case. However, there is a built-in method on the array called concat that provides this functionality. So this is another utility that you don't actually have to write in your code base. The next function we will look at is the unique function that returns the distinct items in an array. Traditionally, you would use something like an array reduction for this, but in modern JavaScript, you can offload that hard work to the set data structure that internally uses equality to filter out the duplicates. Finally, to convert the set back to an array, you can use the array.from static method. The next utility we will look at is the range utility which generates an array of numbers starting at a minimum value and ending at a maximum value. The first step for this would be to generate an empty number array with the desired length. It is very easy to make an off by one error in this. If you think of an array from numbers five to six, the difference between the numbers would be one but the total number of items in the array would be two. So the length of the array we need to generate would be max minus min plus one. We use the array function to create an empty array and then fill it up with zeros. Next, we simply map over the array, creating numbers starting at the minimum value and adding the index to get the desired number. The final utility we will look at is the flatten function that takes an array of arrays and flattens it into a single array. Traditionally, you would need to use something like an array reduction to achieve this, but fortunately, modern JavaScript has this utility built in and you can simply call the flat function. 
This means it is one more utility that you no longer need to create in your code base. And that's all for this lesson on one minute utilities for JavaScript arrays. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this. And leave a comment below if you learned something new or would like to see more utilities. And I will see you in the next one.